Sports versus Team 8. Now, for Team 8, they are still on the hunt for their first Be win. Sure to send split. your picks with hashtag NMEWIN or hashtag T8WIN to at LOL Esports. Over on Twitter, let us know who is going to win this one. You can see the team comps up on your screen. A really big, powerful team fight comp for Team 8. Enemy Esports bringing the first Echo to North America in Inox's hands. They're also the first game Echoes available. I guess we can give him the title for I having mean, the first Echo. He gets it. Yep. Just doing his best. He's going to have to back real shortly. Yeah, he's he's got, out of mana. He can't stay any longer. He's got 1,450 gold. Hold on. Porpoise says hello to Trashy. Smite can zoom. Matches the level 4. And Dodo's already here. Good flash by Trashy to stay alive. But there's already a jinx in this one. The dive from teammate is surely going to work. First blood goes to Cali Trolls. Porpoise has aggro. Jumps right back out. They knock down flares on top of it. And now body drops getting caught out. A summer heal keeps Cali Trolls alive. And it's three kills for zero under a turret. Enemy's seen this one before. Oh boy. That is like the classic 4v3 early game, except it happened on the second. It looks so strange. And a four-man push by teammate into the mid lane. They just keep making the rotations happen. The early Nunu pressure. Anos comes in for the stun. They're going to catch Nien for a lot of damage, though. And he will go down to Trashy. Yeah, and we talked about the positioning from Nien and how important it would be. And he's just com caught completely out of spot right there. Anox doesn't have to really do much to oh, kill him. Oh, the flash to Maybe get it. More. The flash made the slow land. He got the passive tick and everything. 2-0-1 on Echo from Inox. I've seen Death Cap pretty commonly on him as well, but it looks like he's going for the slightly higher mobility build. And they've got a Civ Ulti right on the Dodo. And Baron they're going to knock control. him down. Baron Control is the next logical step. 20 minutes into the game, teammate did not have the ward control. Get an easy pick with Sivirald. Here comes Inox. Yeah, careful though. They're right on top of the Zero turret. Next, gotta get right back at this one. In comes Hecarim. The cavalry has arrived. He's knocked down. Flares. The chase still coming. Slushy wants a lot to do. Jinx helping as well. Porpoise zoning back, but Otter knocks a kill down. Five to four. Spell shields the Ice Blast. Dodges a zap just by running away, and Slushy is still cleaning up. Two for two so far. Enemy Esports have just taken turns having one of their players carry. In their breakout game, it was Otter's Vein. This game, it's Inox's Echo. And earlier, they had almost gotten the win off of Flares' Aureli. But this time around, they're going to get the knockup and the stun on a Porpoise. Nunu gets a Lantern out. The box comes in, and they just cannot get the kill. Inox at half health. Forced ult out for no damage. And the counter engage comes in. Kalitros knocks back Trashy. Gets one, and now the tanky Hecarim. Yeah, just and will not go Inox down. just going back in. No end this time, though. But look at the follow-up. A double kill for Azir. Jinx is in the fray. Nien can't quite catch body drop, but it's a three for one. Four for one. Yeah, and making or breaking that game. Inox could jump in, but he never got a good ultimate off. He had to go back. They couldn't finish Porpoise. Focusing Porpoise and Thresh in the first place doesn't deal with the real issues of this team. And that's not even where Azir gets most of his damage, which is from a sustained fight. But oh. they're trying to pick off Mien. Where's the positioning? Teleporting in. No home guard for the Hecarim. Azir is far away and as no well. Azir. It's going to be a bit of a 4v3 at the start of it all. They jump in on the Porpoise because they cannot catch Nien. His own only hits Trashy and Cali Trolls. Very tanky in the front. Dodo shows up. Porpoise still taking damage. Cali Trolls just refuses to go down. Finally picked up by Flares. And there's more coming in for Inok. Azir now joins the fight. Can Slushi get anything here? The carries of Team are still alive, but their front line is gone, so they have to be very hesitant about how they approach this. A hook would be great. Right now, enemy running towards the other team's base, but they have the speed. A lot of farm on basically everyone. And yeah, this is rushing real down. dangerous, but they do have the Azir. It's good zone control. Let's watch this fight. Done for He's Echo stunned. to catch the end, and Baron Nasher goes to the red team. Everyone is alive still from Team 8. Slushy will get chunked pretty hard by Inox. They're going for Cali Trolls now. Trashy is going to be the first one knocked down. A double kill as Otter's also dropped. Down goes Flares as well. It's a 5v2 now. Team 8 is so superior in team fights that they can just start the Baron like that. Get their AD carry stunned by an Echo and still come out on top in the team fight. Now with Baron and 30 second death timers on three main members of enemy, just in Ox and Body Drop. This could be the game freak. It could be indeed 22 seconds to go till any of the uh, valuable members respawn here. Mid inhibitor goes down. Baron buff still there. Inox just does not have the wave clear. He's at half already. Body Drop barely does anything. And look how fast Nien 
and Slushy knock these turrets down. One more to go. Teammate to get their first win of the split. The dive to Nian, they can't quite get him. That's Brillanomicon, not Ignite. Here's the response. Can they stop the game in time? Slushy diving in a fear from Cali Trolls. One more hit, the Nexus goes down. The first win of the split for Teammate. And it could not have come at a better time. They needed this win. So many difficulties for these guys coming into this game. Slushy playing great. Twitter predictions to us. Tweet hashtag TSM winner, hashtag DIG win to at LOL Esports. We'll see how you guys are voting once we are on the rift here. Team Solomit, a whole lot of tanks, a Callista with a bard for setup, and Echo wreaking havoc. Meanwhile, Dignitas with a lot of split pushing and an AP cog in the back line. And double TP smite in the top lane, which is something we actually haven't seen much of in North America. Trip over will certainly do plenty of damage. Are they going to try uh, Yes, they are. Big old There's the W. Shifter. There's everyone. Shifter flashes and ghost that he will survive and nearly kills. He, oh, does, he does kill Lust Boy. The overextension on Bard. Build into Lich Bane. Bottom lane turret, taking a lot of damage. Wild Turtle does have a BF sword, but so does... Yeah, exactly, that's going to be a great binding. A lot of damage. Wild Turtle could die to the Ignite, but he almost kills Kiwi Kid. But Core JJ will get it instead. Lurking in the wings, Santorin revealing himself, though, of the Helios is fight. first gank as a Team Dignitas team member. And it's a flash three-man stun for Kiwi Kid. Wild Turtle gets bound. Black Shield keeps him safe from Lust Boy. But Dyrus shows up. Explosive cast knocks in Helios. Turtle gets a kill. Bardolt actually disables his own turret. Or sorry, disables the enemy turret. Yeah, making the dive much easier. Team Solomon now with the fifth member in the bottom lane. As far as monetary and experience gains go, this is the first time Kog'Maw becomes very scary. Santorin showing himself in the enemy jungle. Lust Boy has to journey away. Good job, but Helios is around. Smite comes in. The TP from Gamsu. Shark lands. Lust Boy is going to keep himself alive against Earth, but for how long? About two seconds. Shifter gets his second kill of the game. Dig the toss and control a dragon. Yeah, they burned Sivaralt and Fizzle, but that's for a kill totally worth at this point. Dyrus is now here. So Team Dignitas gonna try and force this dragon. Oh man, binding the into Kogma poke, and Helios comes in. Ignite gets Kiwi get another kill. Chase down on a Santor and Dignitas look to be real contenders here, five to one in this game. We said that that mid lane matchup will be a lost matchup if Shifter can go even. He goes a little bit better than even, gets his Ludens, and then the instant that happens, oh, he forces the fight. Bjergsen in. Bjergsen goes really in. A lot of damage comes through. Ults back, but not over the wall. Has to flash to get away. Unlikely steal coming in, and it will go to the red team. One kill answered back by Bjergsen, but Dignitas ahead. Potentially, yeah. And she it's plus cloth armor, I have to cloth armor. Well, I guess he just bought the cloth armor to fight Hecarim. Maybe it still goes to Triforce. Bjergsen, though, in the battle against Gamsu. Fish is going to land. Explosive cast back, though, and there's not a lot of place for Fizz to go. That will be the pickup in the top lane, but Mid's getting pushed down. Yeah, that's... Team Dignitas giving up a lot of ground here, and they can't necessarily push down the mid lane turret because they already took the outer tier. Well, they're going to try anyway with a full wave for the entire team there, but Bjergsen split pushing the bot lane here. It's going to be a trade, maybe, but the turret's going to take a lot of damage. Looks like TSM going to be a bit slow to react, but maybe they're trying to pincher these guys in to look for an engage. Lust Boy gets the ulti on the two. Will the TP come in? Will there be an engage? There's Dyrus, goes for the ulti, knocks around Core JJ and Shifter in the back line, forced to cut away. But Dyrus takes so much damage that he will drop, and Shifter's on a rampage. The chase on the Gamsu, they trade that one back, top laner for top laner. Kiwi can force to flash away. Lust Boy's here, can't land the damage though. Yeah, they traded tanks. Both top laners went on the mid laners, and the teams just collapsed on those tanks. Now TSM kind of low. Shifter still alive, still with the summer spell. This dragon almost surely will result in a fight. It's going to be a lot of damage at the very start. Bjergsen's going to land the stun to Helios. Core JJ spell shield keeps him fine. Bjergsen pops the Zonias. Ults back. He's nearly the dead. The dragon's though. still hitting them. TSM about to die. One more hit would do it. Shifter doesn't land either of these spells. Santorin running, running for his life. Helios not far, but Dyrus is going to re. Engage with Home Guard. He's gonna look for Shifter. The damage comes through. He gets the shutdown. Will they get any more? Gamsu rejoins the fight as well, and Dyrus one hit from dead. 
literally one more living artillery on about four different people on TSM would have killed them. They're all still quite low. Dignitas still trying this dragon. They would have a smite on Gamsu, but he used them in the fight. No smites up for this dragon. Santorin does have his for a potential steal. And he's going to get bound out of range. That's turret number two for Dignitas, and the kill comes through for Fizz. A trade from Dyrus. He's running away. One more hit will do it, but Bjergsen takes him down. Gamsu on the backside kills Kalista as well, and now time for some action. Oh, Good dear. Bye. Bjergsen died, respawned, came back in. No, sorry, actually ran away, recalled, and walked back in. Burns the summoners, get two kills back up, 4-0 and 1. They will be missing, though, tempered fate on this one as Bard ulted and missed. And Dignitas rushing Baron. They're letting TSM get Dragon and hoping they can get some meaningful progress here. Hope they can get the fight started. It's going down rather quickly. Dragon goes down to Kalista. And there's no Bard ultimate to slow down this Baron take because they've already used it and missed. Dyrus is going to have to go in pretty much blind. They have vision. They got to go. They have vision. Here comes the dive on in. No, it gets picked up by Helios in time. Pierson pops the Zodius and the engage has started as already. Lustboy has died. A double bind is massive. They're going to chase down on a Gamsu. Dyrus takes a ton of damage. Gamsu lives somehow. And the cleanup may just happen, but TSM have already picked up two or on the chase. Yeah, they kill two, they lose one, and the Baron somehow Gamsu escapes with his life to the jungle now. And we talked about flanks being a danger for Team Dignitas. Well, here's a flank. The ult is going to not land, though. Black Shield early on the shift there. Are we going to find any kind of engage? Saver knocked back. Santorin forced to retreat. Bjergsen running backwards as well. His clone not anywhere offensive right now. Another W comes in. Looks for Kiwi. Can get some. Now to chase on him. But the Shark drops him dangerously low. The Bard Q will not do much. But Wild Turtle's already here to play cleanup. Two kills picked so far. One more stun attempt for the Echo. Wild Turtle goes and loses it. But Rek'Sai drops three kills to one. Gamsu to retreat, but Bjergsen... Some fancy footwork. Dyrus is teleporting in behind with home guards. And he's going to find Shifter and take him down. Four kills in the fight. Gamsu gets away, but that is clearly a win for TSM. What a crazy fight. Bard opens, not landing the ultimate, but it's a zoning Bard ult that pushes Team Dignitas towards him, and they decide to go in anyways. If he gets in range of Shifter's Kog'Maw, there's no magic resist on him. Yep. I think Sword Void Staff makes him do true damage. So, good luck with this one. They're going to engage on with Wild Turtle. The Gamsu flank will get stopped by Tempered Fate, but how long will they get tempered as Wild Turtle is going to get picked off by Core JJ? But here comes Bjergsen. Wow! Bjergsen evaporates, can't pop anything. So, Dyrus is here for the cleanup. He does knock down the AD carry. He's running, but Gamsu will kill him. It's a 4v2 and a push for Dignitas. You can play the map for 42 minutes, but if your two carries get ganged up on and killed at the start of the fight, you will lose right there. Team Dignitas, they come out of their base, they pop the Sivir ultimate, they kill Wild Turtle, then Team Solomit tries to jump in for assassinations, is unsuccessful, and this could be the game. So now it's solo split push Bard. Lustboy can't do anything but hope to push a turret down. Now he's going to recall. Fate's call still far away. Tempered Fate, I should say. And there, it's going to be the push in towards the inhibitor number one. There is a cannon kill. minion in this wave, so it's harder for Santorin to clear. He needs to be using these barrels to clear the minions, otherwise this game will end. And they're going to try right now. 15 seconds on Wild Turtle. Dignitas to prove they are contenders for the throne. Kiwi Kid is low. Pops the Zonias now into the Nexus. And will there be enough damage? It does not look like it. Three members alive. Wild Turtle respawns. But that's going to be the game. And team Dignitas are in number one. Who would have thought from relegations to now halfway through week three, the sole number one team in the North American LCS. Helios' first game with the squad. Shifter's great AP Kogma. We'll see if he can get some more play and another victory on the board. If you think Team Liquid's going to keep their hold on first place, tweet hashtag TLWin. Or if you're calling this game for Cloud9, tweet hashtag C9Win to at LOLE Sports. We'll see where the fan vote stands throughout the game. And still speaking of that Echo pick, it really comes kind of in your mind. You're just saying, that's weird that nobody's going to ban it, but everybody wants it. <laughs> but it's not really working out for anybody. So, All right. Medios. Yeah. So that's the whole point of relying on that strong mid lane matchup. Yeah. Uh, you can get chased out right there. It does cost him the flash, but bottom one lane may be the ones to pay the price in the end. 3v1 right now. Sneaky doing what he can from the outside to save Lemonation. It's only going to be a few more shots, and Sneaky 
not being able to provide too much. Very low in man in this first engage. They're still looking to get anything back off the auto attacks. One more relentless pursuit into the fight. Focus on to Piglet, focus on to dominate. They do get the summoner heal out, so getting a little bit out of re-engaging. Definitely a lot of control wanted right now on the bottom side of this map. It looks like they also know where the wards are being placed. We see a few pings coming in from Team Liquid here. Yes, they play it safe for the time being. Once again, that engage, it is a level six special. He's gonna throw down the ultimate, he finally does, oh. but it might be enough to take him down. Expecial's forced to go back Duh. in to finally save Piglet. Sneaky flashes forward, parallel convergence comes in, dominates now in the fight with the phase dive. Could it be enough to carry him off though? The early damage may not be there. Dominate looking for the time winder, but it's just gonna be an auto attack. Now on to Lemonation, if he can get out to slow, he might get the catch, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough damage to finalize the big tank. Lemonation just walks away from that one. A little bit repaired there from Team Liquid, but a good engage by C9. And that is exactly why so many teams are now focusing the bottom lane of Cloud9. It's a back and forth between the items. Some finished on the side of Cloud9. Morello Namacon, as you were saying. BF Sword Pickaxe, but you're going up against Fade Sheen now, so you got that poke as well. Definitely going to be a good fight from both teams here. Barring the fact that they take too much damage to start it off, and I think that might be what we're seeing right here. Liquid trying to get in a good spot. The teleport is first from Balls. Quas is going to answer, but it's not a home guard. Hecarim coming in here. He is able to grab the kill, actually. Coming in first, nicely on to Lemonation as he was trying to route the other side of the fight. Balls is right in the middle. Four members of Team Liquid able to focus him down. Meteos going down in the fight to the hands of Piglet throughout that but just not what Cloud9 wanted. Yeah, Cloud9 with a little bit slow there on that invade. Right now, to deny the blue buff would still be pretty good. All right, Collapse here from Team Liquid. They want to answer five people moving up. Quas does not have teleport, or Balls does not have right. teleport, so Cloud9 are going to be outnumbered. Oh, Medios thinking he can get in. Gets bumped out of his absolute zero, and only a few more shots needed to take him down. Quas picks that one up. Now a 202 horse, only getting bigger. Yeah, good turret there for Cloud9. Cross map move. Medios though, takes a bit of poke on the exit. So they were able to use balls getting caught in the jungle. Quote unquote caught. All right, well, let's see here if they end up paying for it. Ooh, Dominate trying to run out. Depth charges on. Medios is trying to follow the back line as balls comes in here. Dominate should not be living too much longer. Goes for the chrono break. He escapes. Parallel conversion. Oh. Not going to be able to come out and shield him at all. And there's just too much catch up. He was not able to use that phase dive to a champion to get the movement. Control the double assassins very well in that last engage. Even though Phoenix jumped back out. Hello. Dominate was in line for the calling. Feeling pretty confident about disengage. Nice dredge line to the terrain. Oh. It's going to get Lemonation to safety here, but Team Liquid still focusing in on this one. Quas with the TP home guard goes right for Sneaky. He's down to about 30% HP immediately and is trying to kite the fight out now. Dominate in the front line. Phoenix and Expecial on the top side as they still go for Sneaky. And Lemonation, Sneaky's now in a bad spot, but he relentless pursuits trying to get the safety. He still goes down. A nice sigil coming in from Phoenix. Takes down Lemonation as it's going to be. <laughs> special in the trample to get a final kill. Ball says fishy stuff on the backside, but Incarnation cannot follow up. And Liquid in and out. Making sure they don't have any chances to get themselves closer to that Baron. Balls really wants oh, to he wants get to make a play. one more engage. The focus needs to be on Baron. He did it. Balls gets in. He steals the Baron. He had the smite, and he used it perfectly. The team is up. So Cloud9 gets that on four members. <laughs> All right. No. Oh, they got it. Oh, it's a quick move. That's the death charge, and that's the call. <laughs> oh, man. They pop the clone. They pop Phoenix. Uh, not only because of his W and right. the play of the Ruin King, but the mixed damage as well. Zero turret going to try and make pressure by time for the Fizz split push. Oh, boy. Yeah, Quas. teleport. Quas coming in again. There's the TP coming in for Fizz. Right in the middle of the fight. That means he has the back line in his eyes if he wants to. And he goes right for Piglet. It can't be helped. He misses the fish, actually. So Qua, or Balls, rather, not getting what he wants out of that fight at all. Medios gets pushed out. Expecial's getting the rest of the peel for the team on. Now they're on to Lemonation. Liquid has all the focus they want after that error. Ooh, Team Liquid able to get another great initiation with Quas from the Hecarim. They force the issue and run straight up mid. Yeah, Cloud9 have to be very careful because Quas was able to make that initiation on Hecarim without using teleport previously. He does have teleport now. 
Leave it up to everything, Kobe. And a pink ward is what you start the fight over. Dominates a little too close. Chrono break back to the fight. He's nice and healthy now. That's going to be Medios going down to the Ignite. Balls to the back line again. Not able to hit that fish as much as he wants. It stays alive even through the chain. And Phoenix goes down. And now the fight is on to Echo. Oh, Dominate it... gets hit. Up and Garnation gets himself out of the fight. Sneaky's trying to kite this one out. Balls, or rather Quas, able to chopper him down. Cut him down with the Hecarim Q. And now they're on to Lemon Nation. It's only going to take a little bit here. <laughs> they know they don't have to worry about King Carnation at all, but they also could be getting a push off. Oh. Here. That's it. Leave the kill to Piglet. Very smart move and start heading towards all the right, objective. Well. Fizz's ultimates. Balls has got himself to the right spots. They are just making it very hard for him to actually come up big on any of them. Parallel Convergence gets thrown up towards the top side, so Dominate has that down as they try to lock down Balls. And Sneaky here. Sneaky not in a good spot. That's going to activate Baron. Baron takes down Sneaky with the help of Quas on that one. They're going to get a good hit onto Piglet here, but they're quickly also just going to trade the damage back over to Balls. Another victory in the favor of Team Liquid. Piglet has actually gone down to the fight and the, I believe, oh right my. in the end on that one. A good hit coming up. Absolute Zero able to do a bit, but not enough to the health bars of Team Liquid as you all right, Kobe. Oh my, the triple kills. Phoenix starts dishing out some huge damage. The benefits of a full tank echo is that you can stick in the same spot yeah. for long enough for the four seconds to catch up. And the ultimate from Dominate there, not only healing, but landing yep. a big chunk onto Incarnation. 10k gold lead Whoa, he now. the flash with just parallel conversions. Just a few minutes ago, C9 had Taking closed head. this gold lead, but now it is Team Liquid pushing all the way in. It's not going to be much longer for C9 in this game, Kobe. It does not look like they've been able to iron out the wrinkles just, yet, just yet. Team Liquid's going to move themselves onto a 4-1 now, being tied with Dignitas in the top of the list as they look at the Nexus turrets. It was only going to be so long in this game. Strong play from Quas in the top lane. Strong play from Phoenix in that mid lane. And the rest of the team was able to pretty much carry along with that. They're on to the Nexus. It's going to be 40 minutes for this one. It's Cloud9 did as much as they could to come back in the game, but it just did not pay off. Team Liquid take down Cloud9 to go 4-1. and one. Yeah, great job there by Team Liquid. A very strong all-around performance from them. Yeah. Oh, turn your turn to stuff the ballot boxes rather cannot speak hard to do vote for the team you think will come out on top by tweeting hashtag TIP winner hashtag TDK win to at LOL Esports and we'll be tallying those up throughout the game as always we had a pretty good 50-50 vote earlier that that game played out exactly how we would thought how we would have thought pretty 50, 50 wait till that man can return to lane I just love that skin, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's fantastic. I think we also may be getting a first blood here. Bishu goes very hard. He does not have the wards surrounding him just yet. He puts the Chaos Storm out, and it's not going to be able to find the right Xiao. Wei. Xiao, he goes down. Great first blood for Impulse. All right, Rush able to cash in. Yeah. It is, again, a bit of a bit of mind games around the laser placement, but... Oh, Rush! Flashes there, kick is in, distort, double distort! Has to flash out as he uses the ultimate. Nicely done. Bottom and turret should go down. Map opened up a little bit more here for Impulse in their 2-0 lead, along with 2K in the bank. Yeah, all going according to plan. Lee Sin, early game gank from Rush. Yeah. Get that lead. Now we transition to the Sivir, pop the uh, Sivir ultimate. Oh, what a kick from Rush. It would have been completely on point in hitting Latman as well. Will they even have what they need to get out? He throws down the heal, but Kez's heal is not enough to keep Lucian alive. And a very pre-planned -pre kill coming up there. Two of them for Impulse. <laughs> even if you know what to expect from Impulse, it's, that's what happens when you play Team Impulse. <laughs> round three, round one. What? That's not it. Remember this fight? So Sightstone finally finished up onto Adrian. Ow, it's allowing them to get themselves more into the jungle, more into these advantageous yeah. fights. And another kill going over to Kaz. He can't even be on the map long enough to add pressure himself. They're trying to make do with the scenario. Four Whoa. members of Impulse, though. He miss, misses both chains, but I still think they have enough damage to follow up on that one. He finishes it off with possibly a sigil, knowing how to control it. That's another one of the hard things that comes out as well, is when you're on that sub-squad, is not everybody's kind of reacting. The call's the same, you're not positioning the same before the calls happen, so. Yeah. It only makes it harder.
things start to kind this, of bounce. This actually could be a very cathartic exercise Ooh. for Team Impulse. Yeah. Uh, to play, play a game by the books. Nobody can really toy with Xiaowei, Xiao in the bot lane. This now spreads out Ooh. to what Impulse used to do. They don't have Ignite, so it'll take a while. Oh, but of course. Jenna might be able to save Sarah. Well, this is the thing. Now you have Xiaowei, Xiao in the bot lane, as we were saying, whether he's on the Yasuo or the LeBlanc in the past. Nah. All right, all right. Come on. Ring the next bell, Rush. Got to get him down. <laughs> Adrian stopping Kaz from making Oh, he serves him up on a dish. Kaz able to jump off the table real quick. Knows he shouldn't be there. Let's see how TIP finished this one out. Could be a catch right here on the lap man that he is not expecting. Oh, yes. And, that was how looking at two, pages. one. Oh, it. Oh, got him. Ding, ding. Keep fighting, guys. Xiao yeah. Xiao always likes to fight. Well, Talisman of Ascension goes off. Actually, Rush gets hit. He gets marked. Kicks back. Kaz dodges the Howling Gale as well to keep himself moving around. Not crowd control whatsoever. Impact, they lose a man. Impact putting up the tree wall here. Here comes Apollo. Now on the hunt is delivered to the rest of the team. He can activate that oh. wherever he wants, and the team gets it as he approaches. Chaos Storm not able to follow enough targets. Bichu's found in the back line. <laughs> Impulse is just getting everything they want in these fights, and I swear I'm, somebody's wishing they had an Ignite on that uh, side, but they don't. Yeah, Rush. Rush doesn't care about a deathless game. He, he doesn't care about... Well, it's not a perfect game because CDK did get a dragon, but they haven't given right. any turrets or the any turret. kills. Well, that was a three and a half minute dragon, pretty much. And yeah. Tip also took top turret because of that, so they could get those lanes matched back up. Sigil into Ethereal Chain. Sigil for you, Sigil for you, <laughs> Sigil for you, everyone. A try by Lapman to get close enough. I think he got headbutted over by Adrian, put in a real bad spot, cooked up, and served to the rest of Impulse here. We'll see how this you, Mundo does. He Xiaowei Xiao going real hard. Seraph's gonna wait for the Ignite to wear off and then use what he can to get back up here. It throws on the ultimate, but it's gonna be a lockdown to Xiaowei Xiao take him from one million to zero. No, he does not. He actually goes for Kaz. He says, just kidding. I want your Nidalee. And now they've kind of not had enough focus to continue the fight. Impact knows that they still want the Mundo. They take him down. He's not going anywhere he pleases. Right, that just tickles now. Oh! Whoa! The, he hit the chain? And another chain! <laughs> another chain. <laughs> and another. What a play so, by Xiaowei Xiao. Shao. The, uh, yeah, I, I blinked. That's definitely going to be the game. The skill shot. Ooh. Uh, never mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> See you later, Bishu. He goes down. 40 seconds for the death timers now on the clock. That is also going to be Latman getting hit up. Xiaowei Xiao, Xiao just gigantic this game. And you have to actually be kidding me. If he does not get another kill, Xiaowei Xiao, Xiao will have the exact same score that he got against Cloud9 last week. 8-0-5 LeBlanc to win the game. 20 stacks this time around. 20 as well. stacks as well. Xiaowei Xiao, Xiao repeating history. Wow. Very nicely done. Guess that just fits the uh, the bill for him. Not too much really that other he can do, but keep playing new champions. The teams have locked in their champs now, so who do you think has got the edge in this one? Tweet hashtag GV win or hashtag CLG win to at LOL Esports here for our final game of the day. Who do you think has the better composition there? As you see on your screen, we're about to find out who can play it better in game as we're almost on the rift. Counter Logic Gaming, 3-1. Gravity, 3-1. Missed Very Cosmic Binding there. move could have been in big trouble had he been caught just outside the turret aggro range. Yeah. And actually, there is a push up here. I was going to say Keen's kind of stuck in the mid lane because he cannot do much against Pobalter, but he makes the Scrap Shield run up. Already overheating, unfortunately. Pretty much used everything to get there. The team may be able to think about it now. Buddy Fufu -fu flash pulverize in a glitter lance across the entire team. Xmithy's in the fire. Move going in for one last hit. The ignite's on, but the heal is still there for Xmithy with his passive. They're able to pick up first blood onto move. Gravity went way too deep on this fight. One last hit. The double kill for Aframu. Holy, that is going to be control of mid and top as well for CLG so many times. They can only ward it. They even have the Wisp in the jungle as well to know if move starts to come in. I believe Nick Smithy just grabbed that. Didn't see it chasing him around. So.
CLG getting everything they want. Pressuring perfectly. Now to Keen in the mid lane. It's going to be the big one. No. He actually holds the ultimate. Very interesting. Oh, he gets the save. Wild growth from Pobelter. Moves in a very bad spot. Going to get some cosmic damage now coming in from Aphromoo, who does not want to pick up a third kill for himself. Very nicely gives that one over to Pobelter. Aphromoo would love to be fed, but he wants to get these carries fed even more. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Gravity just so far behind at this point that even when they get a good opportunity like that, woo! Uh, maybe like Dominant, he hasn't put had time to put in too much, uh, too many games. Yeah, those right. ten games. <laughs> Ooh, out of sight. See, there it is. Tempered fade him. Oh, no, they're not going to have to this time. <laughs> I was going to say that's the follow up. That's what I was looking for. But they have enough distance on the arrow to close, or short enough, I should say. Plays from CLG, 4K ahead now. And they've only dropped one turret, so it's getting pretty bloody. Let's see if they can start grabbing a little bit more. Doesn't look good for Zion Spartan. Does, he does stay in parallel convergence for the shields. Only going to last a little bit, but now he's used phase dive. Uses to get back over the wall. This should be Keen with the ultimate to lock him down, and they won't even need it. Move's going to get his hand in on this one as well. You can only do so much. Providing a distraction works as well. CLG picks up Dragon. Gravity on the board. They get one kill, but they lose Dragon for it. Yeah. It is hard. Okay, well, let's get caught here. It is really, really hard. All right, I'll wait, wait for another fight to go off. <laughs> Down on the chase. He should be good. One more Q, one more Q. He should be in range. Actually, he flashes for it. Yeah, it's he, that passive lockdown. He had that slow. So it's hard for move. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's hard for a, a jungler in general. Right, yeah. If you're working with a lane swap deficit of a triple kill and right. a tower, the calls he has been making are actually just in favor of CLG because they're in the right spot. A very unfortunate turn of events so far for those early engages. Right in the face of Hauntzer. Hits him right in the horse tail. <laughs> Aphromoo does the work. <laughs> of course he does. Oh, good pop by Pobelter. Uses help pick, so the Glitter Lance actually goes through. Bunny Fufu -Foo coming through strong here. Throws down the flash. Pulverize, double lift, and Aphromoo both go up. Teleport's now coming in. And it looks like Zion Spartan's not going to be able to deliver too much other than the Time Winder. No, he goes for Phase Dive right on the Parallel Convergence. Xmithy's there as well, figuring out what he wants to do. More or less just being a tank, so the rest of the team of Gravity cannot get back in. Keen's going to go down here because keep putting himself in the fight. But they're doing it for move. They're doing it for Alltech. Can they clean up the fight now? Alltech not going back in. A few hits could have definitely been played there. Hauntzer with the TP into the fight now. He got back from 20 seconds of being dead. This is a 25 to 30 second fight now that's still continuing. And Zion Spartan's going to be the only one alive for CLG with Hauntzer and Alltech on the other yeah, side. Yeah, a fight that Gravity end up winning yeah. in the end. Yeah, they did lose the turret in the process, but they got four kills being down this much. That's a tremendous achievement for Team Gravity. Oh. Looks like Alltech could have done a good amount of damage there as well in the fight. We're right back into it, Kobe. Hauntzer has the ult back up. We just saw him do this into the fight. Aphromoo's <laughs> going to get caught. He gets wild growth. That's the journey that's up, but he's not allowed to take it with everybody right there on his tail. More, more so, he didn't want to take it. Goes down 30 seconds on the clock, and now Gravity have a bit of room to breathe. They don't really have waves to do anything. All right, looks like uh, we may have a collapse here. Silver Ultimate popped. Monster. Double lift in the bottom lane. Won't be able to add much if they catch somebody, but nobody does get caught. Just a whole lot of my muscles are bigger than yours right now. Onslaught of yeah. Shadows through three members of Counter Logic Gaming. This is where Double Lift needs to be here. Fires the huh. arrow, cross map, temper fate, locks up three, and it opens up onto Bunny. He's got a breakable will already. Zion Spartan tries to dive in, could Go use back. the ult. He goes back and he pops down Alltech. But once you're in the fight, you're pretty much going to get burned up unless the rest of the team is there. And that means Double Lift comes in from the side. Another challenger approaches, and it's enough to get a double kill and take down Keen. A three for two overall in favor. For CLG. <laughs> Classic split pushing AD carry. Double lift waits. You trust the teams. At... But some very good micro plays there. Uh oh. Setting up camp. There's a lot of wards around them right now. I wonder if this could backfire really hard. Parallel conversions. They're not looking. They're looking for the fight on their wards. There's the arrow. Once again, it hits Bunny Fufu, -Foo, so not too much work on locking down what they need. Zion Spartan throws down the chrono break, and he's back to the outside with Wild Growth on. 
Now the teams have been split once more. Nice Cosmic Binding, keeping and moving oh. the rest of the team in place. Alltech on the backside, very low HP, and they start trading a few kills back and forth. Keen and move both down. Aphromu trying to follow now into Alltech. May not be able to get it. The speed trying to give himself the boost, and they still lock it down. A triple kill now for Double Lift. The last fight was two kills for him. Now he's 6-1 and 10, and CLG's on to Baron with the ace. All right, that should be the Baron here for CLG, and some inner turrets going down for them as they will be able to siege up after that. Whew. Yeah, the dangers of setting up one of those plays when you are not fully confident of your control of the vision. Yeah, it's not going to be too hard. Oh. There's one push, double lift actually right in the front, goes down to about 10% HP, but he's back. Now on the back line, able to charge up with that Bloodthirst that he built up first. The rest of the team getting thrown around. Now they take down move. He tries to go too far in. Bunny Fufu throws himself in once more for Alltech to try and get more blue buff. Boomerangs off. It's not going to happen. They are methodically and surgically removing gravity from the map one by one as they do the same with their turrets. Alltech is just forced to watch. All right, gonna press in on the Nexus here. Minions not quite ready, but they do have plenty of time. Pretty good wave here, Man, Kobe. we see the survivability of a Bloodthirster first Ash when paired with mid Lulu. Got about five seconds left. A few home guards around the base. Alltech on the phone gets taken down by Zion Spartan. Chrono breaks back to the Nexus turrets. A well-fought game by Counter Logic Gaming. They do not seem to be down and out from their team solo mid loss last week. And they are able to pick up the win over the 3-1 gravity.